very much, Kevin, for introducing me and uh, my topic for today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to go through the background of my research first. Today, research will focus on self reference of P91 steel. Uh, so, P91 steel is mainly used in the UK power plant, where the, this is one of the examples of a steam header. Uh, the main problem we're facing now is that the current power plant has to operate in conjunction with the renewable power plant. So, we are increasingly experiencing more and more down magnetic T load pattern. One of the load patterns we show here, where the pressure and temperature are operated together with the unexpected down magnetic T load. So it is more, more and more important to understand what is the combination effect of pre and fatigue loading rather than uh, in the traditional force of power plant where the creep fertility determines the lifetime of the power plant. So attempt has been made in the literature to study uh, Iliaxo TMF lifetime, a typical machine that uses instrument machine that is shown here, uh, where the specimen is heated by this induction coil. This kind of uh, double magnetic fatigue sample usually have an internal hole which is shown in the disc drawing here, just to make the faster cooling and the heating rate for the testing. But the main problem is that we have no control over surface roughness of this internal specimen. And so today my topic is going to explore what effect this uh, internal roughness gives to the overall fatigue lifetime. Uh, by saying that, so today objective will be to characterize the internal roughness of this, uh, the hollow specimen, TMS specimen that I showed earlier on, and to carry out the FE analysis using the unit cell of surface profile measured from the actual TMS specimen and um, using the multi NCR viscoplastic constitutive model to identify the stress strain response of this uh, effect from this roughness. And finally, to understand whether the lifetime data given by this unit test is it actually material specific or it has been secured by the roughness effect. So to do that, the first thing we have to do is to characterize the roughness of the TMS specimen. So for this purpose, we have the test coupon with the same, it has been drilled using the same cutting speed, feed rate, and two diameter, and et cetera, for the manufacturing of the, this kind of internal hole. And that roughness has been measured by the focus varying profiler, or Elipona, to gather the Z height of the internal surface. So the actual surface texture of the internal surface looks like this. And from this texture, we have a Z height information. So we can easily implement these Z height information to the MATLAB and to do the, a lot of post processing to characterize this uh, surface roughness profile. So by using this uh, MATLAB surface profile, first of all, we have to filter out a lot of the unwanted waste. First of all, the specimen has been measured in the inclined position. So we have this inclined form linear trend that we have to filter out. After filtering out this linear form, we still have uh, this, this uh, kind of wave frequency wave net, which is nothing to do with the roughness of the specimen. So we also have to filter this out as well. Uh, just note that these, these are noise from the Elicona uh, measurement system. It's, not, it's nothing to do with the surface roughness or waveness of the uh, texture. So after that, we've done all of the, this uh, various filtering process. We will have the roughness, which is sampled into the 300 micrometer length, which is shown here. Uh, what I've done to this is that we have uh, applied the Fourier transform, uh, which basically means we try to fit the different kind of wave with the frequency along this 300 micrometer. And I have picked 200 random surface profile in the sample landscape of 300 micrometer and we change it to the Fourier transform and study the amplitude and the frequency of the wave. Uh, we take the statistical average of it, and one of the profiles that's shown here is the result of after Fourier transform and get the average and replot it again using amplitude and the frequency of it. So based on the, these uh, uh, so-called representative roughness from the actual surface texture, we can now continue to do the FE analysis using the idealized uh, surface roughness profile. So the first surface roughness profile is a half sinusoid with the amplitude and then the half wavelength shown here. And the second idealized profile is the sinusoid profile. These uh, amplitude and the wavelength are obtained from the uh, actual surface test measurement and uh, performing the statistical study. Uh, for this kind of an element cell, we have applied the appropriate uh, symmetry and the periodic boundary condition. 
And we're going to study by applying the TMF uh, load to this, and then compare the result to the co uh, completely uh, flat interface uh, uniaxial specimen. So the, to do that, we have to know what is the constitutive material model first. The material model that we use is a really classical uh, Chabot type uh, multi axial viscoplasticity model. Uh, which is a yield function shown here, which includes the isotropic uh, hardening term and the kinematic hardening term. Uh, both isotropic and kinematic hardening term has a temperature dependent temperature dependent term, basically meaning that these parameters will be dependent on the temperature, and also the temperature rate dependent term, because for the TMF test, we are varying the both temperature and temperature rate, so we have to take care of both of them. And this, this model will take care of both temperature and temperature, dependent, temperature rate dependency. And finally, the, vis the, the viscous behavior is uh, 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 characterized by the simple power law, which is shown here. So by showing this model, there are a lot of material constants that have to be identified for the elastic property and uh, a lot of hardening parameter for isotropic and kinematic, and also the viscous parameter. To get this the temperature dependent parameter, they are, they are, we use the three different low cycle of tap turned on the 400 degrees C, 500 degrees C, and 600 degrees C, uh, respectively. So, getting the material parameter from the experimental low cycle of hysteristic loop is shown in the this slide here. Uh, Basically, we use the we use the stress partition method. Basically, uh, once we got this hysteresis rule from the experiment, we divide this loop into the two different regions. One of them is a viscous region, where we can see that the stress has been uh, tight dependent release at the same same strain control condition before it joins to the region BC where the stress has become elastic again. So. What, what is the advantage of using this kind of uh, strain control dwell time instead of using just a simple loading and unloading curve? The reason is that by using this curve, we can separate the viscous region from the elastic region. For where the elastic region will determine the iso uh, isotropic hardening term and kinematic hardening term, where using this viscous stress realization region, we can identify the viscous parameter at the different temperatures. So these are the material parameters that are determined using the three different isothermal tests. Uh, the detailed procedure has been shown in the upcoming the International Journal of Mechanical Science uh, uh, as, uh, in this uh, publication, so I won't go detail through it. But these are the material parameters that are going to be used for the uh, thermal medical fatigue simulation. So to test whether the parameter that I define actually can represent the, the TMF behavior, I have used the two different experiments to benchmark it. The first one is that the, where the temperature is varied between 400 to 500 in phase with the strain where the strain is increasing from 0 to 0.5%. And the other test that I use is the out of phase, that means the temperature is varying out of phase to the strain. So as we can see that they are the very good agreement between the simulation and the experiment. The curve has been shown at the different cycle of the fatigue lifetime, so we, uh, we can make sure that the material parameter we determine from the isothermal test uh, can be used for the TMF simulation. So once we confirm this uh, fact, we're going to use uh, this type of uh, sinusoid interface that I, I've shown earlier on uh, for the TMF simulation. So the, the two different uh, sinusoid interface has been shown here, and then the, this is a momentum <coughs> control plot being showing that there is a multi-axial stress state can be observed at the rough interface, and although the region further away from this interface, the stress is uh, mainly uniaxial. And I also compare the stress state at the peak and the valley region, uh, which is uh, to the uh, to the you need a single cell model. Basically, the single cell model will assume that uh, this interface is the perfectly flat rather than the sinusoid interface. And we can see that the, the peak stress, the peak, the, the Vomisa stress at the peak region is uh, almost uh, uh, 1.2 times higher than the 
a unit sum, a single sum model. So as the stress in the two direction, which is actually in the loading direction, also can be expected that the stresses at the peak regions are always higher than the single cell model. So that basically means that this kind of uh, rough interface could create a local crack, local crack initiation at this point before uh, the crack has been initiated as well in the, in the specimen. Uh, another thing that we have, we can identify from this uh, simulation that we also can compare the damage accumulation at the different position of the uh, specimen. So to do that, we use the number uh, damage accumulation model, which is based on the plastic strain accumulation and the uh, energy accumulation, which can be calculated using the isotropic softening parameter and, and the plastic strain, accumulated plastic strain. The whole model is assumed to be a uh, uniform temperature distribution, so there is no possible, uh, uh, it's, it can be found there. So isotropic behavior will be identical throughout the specimen. So damage can be predicted by studying plastic strain accumulation. So the next step is to compare the, the isotropic softening and plastic strain accumulation at the three different points of the specimen, one at the peak of uh, one of the peak of the specimen, which is shown here, and then the uniaxial specimen, which is shown here, and at the belly. So from these three plastic accumulation, we can see that uniaxial model and the peak uh, specimen almost have the same uh, isotropic softening behavior, whereas the uh, higher plastic accumulation is uh, expected at the peak region of the uh, of the interface. So we can we can see that the damage will initiate quicker at the peak of the interface. Uh, compared to the flat region of the specimen. So this is only representing one of the aspect ratio that I tested because I've tested the three different aspect ratio. I also compare the affected plastic spring accumulation with the number of uh, cycle which is plotted here. So as we can see that as the aspect ratio is higher, we can also expect the higher accumulated plastic strain that in the other way also say that the damage could initiate quicker for the higher aspect ratio specimen. And to back up the, the hypothesis of the saying that the crack can initiate at the local feature or local asperity, I also done a few uh, I also taken a few optical micrographs and SEM picture where the, the upper surface showed that the external surface of the TMS specimen and the these lower picture show the internal surface. As we can see from this same scale, we can see that the internal surface is definitely rougher than the external surface, as expected. And also we can see that this kind of local crack initiation has been expected at the internal surface of the TMS specimen before the, 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 at, at the, this peak region of the uh, roughness feature as uh, predicted from the numerical model. So by this, we can conclude that the sub, sub, uh, we have done the surface rough, we have characterized the surface roughness of the TMS specimen using the uh, Nikona optical profiler, and the resultant surface profile was statistically studied to obtain representative geometry for the FE unit cell. Uh, Multi-axial viscoplastic uh, model uh, was successfully developed and benchmarked, and the final element analysis showed that the roughness feature indicate multi-axial stress state and. Uh, higher stress concentration is observed at the peak of the asperity. So due to this higher uh, accumulation of stress and uh, the higher accumulation of plastic strain also been uh, expected at the peak of the asperity. And the simple estimation based on the energy method predicted that crack initiation is more likely to occur at the peak of the roughness feature. And the uh, hypothesis has also been backed up from the optical and microscopic images. Thank you.